G'day and welcome to Grizzly and Bear Overland. A few months ago, I wrote an article for the French off-road magazine, Cat Cat Mondial. The article was translated to French by our good mate, Sophie. Merci beaucoup, Sophie. In this video, I've tried my very best to bring that article to life. We hope you enjoy this recap of the first two years of our journey. A Land Rover Defender 130, an Australian driver, a French co-pilot, car accidents, snapped axles, frozen river crossing disasters, arrested as spies in Azerbaijan and tours of Afghanistan. All of that and much more in only four years of full-time overland adventure. We are Steph and Lee from France and Australia and we are on a mission to drive our Defender camper around the world with no time limit or planned route. We seek off-road adventure, mountains to climb and new cultures to experience. In 2017, after recently completing a 12-month journey across Europe and Eastern Europe into Turkey in our 2004 Land Rover Defender 90, we had a taste for adventure. For the next big plan, it was decided that a Defender 90 was too small. We purchased a 2012 Land Rover Defender 130 in Germany along with a four-wheel camper, removable camper. In Annonne, we modified our Defender at the specialist Land Rover garage, Newman 4x4. Jobs were quit, possessions stored and sold. We kept only the essentials that could fit in our new, full-time, tiny home on wheels. Departing Paris, our initial path led us south, through Spain and a ferry to Morocco. In four weeks of Moroccan exploration, we travelled all over the country. Skirting the northern sections of the Sahara Desert, we experienced why many consider this beautiful country to be one of the best overland destinations in the world. Rock climbing in the high Atlas Mountains and crossing the desert are experiences that will stay with us forever. From Morocco, we returned to Spain, making our way across the Mediterranean coast to reach Portugal. Little did we know this country would change our lives forever. We enjoyed lovely winter weather, rock climbing, off-road and exploring until one day disaster struck. On a blind corner, a speeding truck lost control and veered onto our side of the road. With no time to react, we collided head-on with this truck and in an instant our defender and dreams were destroyed. Thankfully, nobody was seriously injured and our camper was safely left behind at a campsite. The months that followed were stressful and uncertain. We received insurance money for our damaged Defender. The financial loss was significant and the future of our journey became uncertain. We considered all options until finally, the decision was made that we cannot let this setback deter us from our dreams. I returned to work for several months in Africa in an attempt to recoup the lost finances. We purchased another Defender 130, this time a 2010 model and again returned to Newman 4x4 for the modifications. In May of 2018, we depart Paris for a second time. Our spirits were high, we knew that nothing could stop us. We overcame this enormous setback, we could achieve anything. Our path took us east through Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Albania, Greece and into Turkey, all within the space of a few months. Upon reaching Turkey, one of our favourite countries, it was time to slow down and truly embrace this magnificent part of the world. We spent six weeks exploring and rock climbing all over Turkey countless wonders in this country, including ancient architecture and rich history, stunning landscapes of all shapes and form, delicious food and rich culture. On top of all these things, it's the open, kind-hearted, generous nature of the Turkish people that made us fall in love with this country. From Turkey, we crossed into Georgia, a country famous for its incredible nature and overland trails. We explored the Swaneti National Park and gorgeous Ushguli regions before heading south to Armenia. 
Armenia is a country less frequented by overland travellers, but in our opinion, should be placed high on the list and not missed. Friendly people, great food and spectacular scenery make this tiny country a must-see. Our initial plan was then to continue south through Iran to reach Central Asia. Unfortunately, a political situation in the country had our visa applications denied and an alternative must be considered. We chose to attempt the infamous Caspian Sea crossing from Azerbaijan to Kazakhstan. A route renowned for its unpredictable shipping with no set schedules, often resulting in travellers waiting days for passage. In the end though, our crossing was uneventful. It was our crossing of Azerbaijan to reach the port of Baku that proved the challenge. Only one day after crossing the border, we were arrested by military police on suspicion of being Armenian spies due to our time spent in the country in which Azerbaijan is currently at war. Of course, the entire thing was a big misunderstanding and we were released after a stressful and intense day under interrogation by the military police chief of the entire region. Of all the moments on this journey, our initial arrival by ship to Kazakhstan after a five-day sea voyage remains one of our most memorable. The feeling was as though we had truly arrived in another world. Mangistau province and its wide open spaces was something we didn't realise we'd been craving. Desert camels and extremely friendly locals who would stop to talk with us frequently were just a small part of what makes this country so special. Camel and horse milk being offered as a gift of greeting will test even the strongest Western stomach. From Kazakhstan, we journeyed east and crossed the remote Western border of Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan, a country famous for its links to the epic Silk Road. For us, it was in the ancient cities of Kiva, Bukhara, and Samarkand that we were introduced to this beautiful part of the world. The architecture is awe-inspiring, letting the imagination run wild. Ruins of ancient desert forts litter the landscapes through much of the countryside, providing truly unique camping experiences. East we move, traversing the mountains to enter Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is one of the most stunning countries in the world for its natural, untouched beauty. We spent an extended time exploring this country and its countless trails, both for vehicles and hiking. A preferred method of transport by horseback and nomadic people living in yurts throughout the high mountains is just incredible. On our first attempt to cross the mountains to Tajikistan, we snapped a swivel ball housing at 3,000 meters altitude in the middle of a blizzard. A 24 hour recovery had us return safely to a master mechanic in Bishkek city. We performed repairs and maintenance before again attempting to reach Tajikistan. This attempt was successful and we reached our long term project the Bartang Valley Road. A remote mountain road rarely completed by locals or tourists due to the high risk of avalanche, flood and earthquake. The majority of this 300 kilometre trail is above 4,000 metres in altitude, which only adds to the challenges faced by vehicle and person. The Bartang Valley Road remains one of the most amazing adventures we've had on this journey. We spent time with villagers who live almost completely self-sufficient in this harsh corner of the world. Cut off from civilization for up to six months a year during winter. The hospitality shown to us during our brief time with them is something we will cherish and respect forever. As we emerge from the western end of the Bartang Valley, we arrive to a wide, turbulent river and sheer mountains rising from the banks on the other side. The other side of the river is Afghanistan. If everything goes to plan, 
our next destination.